Hello everybody, this is Professor Iris Miano once again giving you a construction demonstration. This is for SMC Math 32 Plane Geometry. So if you are um, having your textbooks open, you can open them to page 188, which I have failed to write on my little uh, page here. So I'll jot that down for you. We're on page 188 and it's the very uh, one of the first things happening in section 4.1 in general, construction six, which will be a perpendicular line. And I know what you're thinking, didn't we just do this for construction five? Uh, kind of, but we're going to have our perpendicular line that we construct um, going to be from a point not on the given line. That's gonna be the distinction that we make here. So you will want to uh, have your uh, appropriate tools, which will again be a writing utensil, a compass, and a straight edge. And first thing we want to do here is kind of open up this compass. How much? Oh, you know, that'll determine on the relative distance of the point and the line that we give ourselves in this construction demonstration. So let's go ahead and give us ourselves a line. And we don't even need to put any points on this line. So no points, call it line L. So give yourself a fancy little L off to the side here. And then somewhere above, if you're going to follow the book's uh, you know, demonstration of steps on page 188, uh, put a point above the line L somewhere and call it point P, okay? Now, the next thing that you wanna do is open your compass in order to, centered at P, you want to be able to um, do the following. You want to be able to start above line P with the writing utensil, swing below, so cross line L, go below line L, swing back up again on the other side, and cross line L again and come up above. Now, I want you to notice, if I tighten up my compass right here, I can do so as to where I don't have enough radius in order to even cross line P. So notice if I drew a very light line right here, I would not be able to cross line P. So that's gonna be the defining characteristic of how wide you need to open up your compass. Let me go ahead and just erase that arc right there because that was not gonna cut it. So definitely open up your compass to a width that's gonna get the job done. And what is the job? Center it at P, start above line L, draw your arc crossing line L below, crossing line L again on the other side, okay? So it's kinda of like, you know, you have a Cyclops monster, P being the eye, and it's got a big old smiley face. You like that? And the smile needs to cross a line P twice over. So go ahead and note those two crossing points, it's very important. And what do they name them? A and B, they name them A and B. So we do have <laughs> points on this line eventually, but not to start. Okay. And then you can keep your compass, I believe at the whatever width you determined was appropriate for this first arc. And you can draw two arcs underneath line L such that they intersect with one another kind of um, directly below point P, okay? So by that I mean center it at A, go ahead and draw some arc below, oops, let's get right in the middle of that point, there we go. And what I mean is like something like this. You wanna go below line L, but um, also directly below line P, so that'll do. And then go ahead and also at point B, centered at point B, draw another arc such that you intersect with that second arc that you drew. That'll be uh, fine, but if you wanna just swing it around just as much as you did this other one so you have like nice symmetry, uh, you know, swing to your heart's content. Now, go ahead and note the intersection of these two arcs, and then check this out. Isn't this like beautifully in line with point P that we have up here? That is not by mistake. Now let's go ahead and label this new point Q and get out your straight edge. And you can probably tell what we're gonna do is this last step, connect P and Q for a beautiful parallel line, or sorry, perpendicular line. I said parallel, but I totally meant perpendicular. Sorry, I did not mean to say the wrong word there. A perpendicular line. It goes through a point not on the original line, but it's definitely perpendicular. And so we get to say that a right angle is being formed right here. 
that's one way you can state it, but really what we want to do is uh, rely on appropriate symbology. So off to the side here, we can say that line PQ was our construction and it's perpendicular to line L. And that's fine for you guys to uh, uh, mix notation there. If you're just like, ew, I don't like this um, lowercase letter designation for this line mixed with this um, points um, name for the line, you can always go this route with it. Line PQ is perpendicular to line AB. That's an alternative name for that original line that you came up with by virtue of coming up with the locations of points A and B. And that's all there is to it. So if you ever need to construct a perpendicular line to a given line that has to go through a point not on the given line, construction six is your jam. That's all for now. Stay tuned for more coming up soon.